Hi, I'm Richie Houghton. Uh, I've been in, interested and involved in electronic music for the last 25 years, growing up in the Windsor, Detroit area, uh, being a, you know, a, a young 16-year-old kid on the doorsteps of Juan Atkins, Derek May, and Kevin Saunderson, and uh, hearing the future before I knew it was even coming. So Nitzareb, that total age, um, what an incredible album. You know, I must have been 15 or 16 when this album came out. And, uh, you know, I was listening to electronic music at that point. I was very into the industrial sound coming from Vancouver and Canada and, and Chicago. And uh, was also a big fan of Mute Records. And, and when this, this, this album, it was just, it had an incredible energy and excitement. And, you know, I think everything you want, you know, want to hear at 16 or 17, you know, you're, you're like a kid, you're, you're you know, you want something like, wow, like nearly not vicious, but like with an edge, you know, you know. So I used to drive around. I had this old um, Tercel Toyota green car and just used to like bomb around the city with that total age, like pumped. You know, it's incredible. My name's Daniel Miller. I started a label called Mute, which I still run. Um, we we were involved with electronic music at the very beginning, um, working with bands. Well, I did my own single under the name of The Normal, and we also worked with Depeche Mode, Yazoo, Erasure, Gold Frap, Night Sereb, Plastic Man, Speedy J, and many others over the years. It's Autobahn by Kraftwerk. And um, so I was... Um, just a little bit of background on how I heard it the first, the first time. Um, I was, uh, I was, I'd left my job, I'd left, left college, I worked for a couple of years and I left my job to tr do some traveling and I was just kind of traveling around Europe and I picked up a, and I was kind of a bit very out of touch, there's obviously there's no internet, I'm talking about early 70s here. So but I, found, I picked up a copy of the Melody Maker somewhere on my travels and there was an advert for, for Autobahn by Kraftwerk. I'd been traveling a lot on the outer barns at that time, going up and down, you know, around Europe. And I thought, I knew about Kraftwerk, and I'd heard their earlier stuff, and I wasn't a huge, I liked it, but I wasn't like a big fan, a huge fan. And I thought, wow, those two words together, Kraftwerk and outer barn, they kind of sum up how I'm feeling right now. So I got to the first record show I could get to, somewhere, I think it was in Vienna, and, I, and you were able to listen to records in record shops in those days. And, I said, and so I listened to it for the first time in that record shop and it just kind of blew me away. I'd been listening to a lot of electronic music over the, the, the previous years, but a lot of it was much more droney and kind of cosmic, I suppose. Um, and this was so direct and stripped back and minimal and poppy. So it kind of, all my sort of memories from the 60s, the pop, great pop stuff of the 60s, like, you know, the Beach Boys and the Kinks, and all, my, all the kind of experimental stuff I'd been listening to over the previous years seemed to somehow come together on that record. And it was so repetitive, and I loved the idea of repetition and minimalism at the time. And so that became my personal anthem for my whole travels. And every city, I, I didn't have a record player with me, obviously. So every city I went to, I went to a record shop and listened to the record. And I became basically obs totally obsessed by it. And um, still am, really, when I listen to it. I almost don't dare listen to it too much these days, because it means almost, it's kind of too overwhelming for me, in a way. Um, so... And, yeah, it became, a, you know, sort of the electro-pop element of it. Experimental electro-pop element was kind of a blueprint for me, I guess. I am Carl Cox. I have been playing music since I was eight years old. And, uh, and here I am now, uh, basically 27 years playing electronic dance music, starting off basically playing house music to begin with from 1987. Oxygen. This is Jean-Michel Jarre, 1977. This is techno music as far as I'm concerned because when it came out, all it was was electronic sounds. Everything that you heard was created by Jean-Michel Jarre from an electronic point of view. And it just takes you away in a sense of when you put it, the record on at the beginning and it doesn't stop, there's no gaps. It's an absolute masterpiece from beginning to end. And you have to listen to it in succession to understand the journey that he wanted to take you on based on now using, utilizing technology to make music. And as far as I'm concerned, this was the pinnacle of what, what we're into today. So please don't forget it. Jean-Michel Jarre, Oxygen.
I'm David Guerra, I'm a DJ producer. That's gonna be my number one for sure. Uh, and, and it brings back lots of amazing memories, um, Daft Punk homework. Um, I used to uh, be a club promoter at the same time that I was a DJ. And um, those guys were coming to the club very often and it's unbelievable. You know, they were playing in my club. Uh, <laughs> and honestly, I had no idea at the time that it was going to be that big. I thought they were amazing, but I didn't know it was going to be such a major change in music history, you know. And um, when that album was out, I would, you know, I was a DJ and I would play just everything from the album. It was almost like a Daft Punk concert every night. And uh, I was not the only one, you know. And, and um, yeah, and it was like the first time we were proud to be French, you know, really. <laughs>